Now, professional learning communities are where we gather together to, to support our learning. So often this involves reflective dialogue, talking together, discussing things, sharing ideas, listening to other people's ideas, their criticisms, um, whether or not they support the idea or disagree with it. So there is generally some aspect of a dialogue involved in a professional learning community. Now in schools and in educational organisations, a strong professional learning community will often have a lot of its dialogue about things to do with procedures, uh, creating syllabuses and creating assignments and managing the day, things of that nature. But a really strong professional learning community is focused on the students. What's happening with the students? How are they learning? Are they learning effectively? What's going well? What's going wrong with them? What bits are happening? And the discussion is much more around students learning rather than the procedural processes of teaching. So the interactions between teachers is a big part of a professional learning community in a school. How they actually talk about ideas. Are they confident to share their failures? Are they confident to share their successes? Um, that level of conversation helps define a vibrant, effective learning community. Now, this involves then collaboration, working together towards shared outcomes. Now, in schools, this is often a shared outcome for students in order to be um, better learning in the school. <clears throat> in a university, it might be a shared outcome of various courses and academics um, generating um, programs that engage students in their learning. In a workplace, it may be a shared outcome towards a more specific goal around productivity improvements, where the learning is focused on improving some aspect of that organisation. But there sh should be some sort of collaborative focus. And then there's shared values and norms. And this is where people generally have um, similar perspectives and agreements now, it might be on that pedagogy. When we looked at the uh, concept map, looked at all the different ways of teaching, it may be having groups of teachers that have a shared uh, perspective on how teaching and learning should occur. It might also be on more specific things. Let's say ChatGTP, whether or not it should be used by students or not. You may have some teachers that say, yes, absolutely, we want to use it with the students, help their, support their learning. Others may find that it's... Um, makes their assessment processes more complicated and so they feel that it should be banned from the use by students. So that would then set up some discord. So having some shared values and norms and perspectives is important for an effective learning community. Otherwise it may fragment into multiple communities. So learning communities are groups that share common academic goals and attitudes to learning. Um, they may meet regularly or irregularly and they generally have some sort of focus of membership. It may be of teachers, maybe of people involved in teaching a particular year level or a particular discipline at university or in a organisation it may be from a particular department or aspect of that organisation. But a learning community should have four aspects. There should be some level of membership, something that defines who is part of that community and who isn't. If it includes everyone, then it's by default it's sort of, yeah, it's not really a community then. It's, um, it should have some level of influence. It should have some action that it does something. Now that may be just internally, it may help members improve their practice. But there should be something that happens as a result of coming together as a community. There should be the fulfilment of individual needs, and that may be different for different individuals. One member may just want to learn more, become more proficient. Another might be wanting to lead the organisation, lead the group, and express their capabilities around leadership. Another might be seeking promotion, and maybe the recognition of being part of that group is influential in supporting their promotional aspirations. So there can be a range of different individual reasons for being part of a learning community. 
And there should be some sort of shared events and activities that give some emotional con connection between the members. Coming together to uh, do a professional learning activity or to go into a competition or um, complete a project together. Something that helps galvanize the group around something. So there are these range of different um, elements of what makes a learning community. Now there's one other um, model that I'd like to have a look at, and that is the inquiry learning community. This is a special case learning community that's more focused on inquiry-based learning. So much more focused on the learning process. And it has four main elements around information gathering um, and sharing, uh, knowledge building, where we build upon that information and turn it into knowledge that can be utilized. Increasing our understanding of various concepts as a result of that knowledge and improving our experience and making us better as a result of improving that understanding. So these are all aspects of a inquiry based um, learner centered, knowledge centered and assessment centered approach to a learning community. So think about how these different models may represent the communities you're involved in. Now, one of the communities you're involved in is this learning experience. And part of it is doing this shared activity of creating a self-study. How are you engaging as a community in doing that? Are you sharing your ideas with others? Are you learning from others? Are you engaging with your peers? Are you engaging with your lecturer? Are you engaging with others? Are you talking to others outside of the group with um, issues around your learning? So think about the learning community that you are building, that you're constructing around yourself and how it's supporting your learning and your self-study.